This episode of Sessler Something is brought to you by Untold Riches. Come on, let's have an adventure. All right, everyone, it's time to talk about a topic I'm exhausted about talking about and imagine you, some of you are exhausted having to discuss, and that is violence in video games. Of course, it's come to the forefront because a bunch of game industry leaders met with Joseph Biden, and then the president has asked for a study to be conducted into the uh, correlation between violent video games and violent behavior. I actually invite having this study because it will probably show that there is nothing conclusive about violent video games and violent behavior. Uh, the best studies that are out there that look like that they're legitimate can show some association with aggressive behavior following playing video games, but trying to show that aggressive thoughts behavior will lead to violence as a one-to-one -one correlation, that would be a little bit tough. Also, I'm of the mind that the aggressive tendencies come from the competitive nature of the games or the fact that you're playing against the game uh, rather than the fact that there's violence being showed. Uh, I, I know some, some times I've done Tetris and I'm a little bit edgy when it's over. Um, having said that, of course, there is a lot of anxiety in the gaming community about what all of this is going to mean. There is a gentleman, I believe a Democrat from Utah, who's in the House of Representatives, who wants to try to put forth a bill that will give the ESRB ratings the force of law. That probably won't work uh, because the Supreme Court said that can't work. So uh, there really, uh, there's gonna be a lot of bluster. I don't think it will ever turn into some type of policy or some type of law that will change our access to video games as they are now. Now, having said that, it is interesting to watch this erupt yet again and kind of see how the dynamic works. And I, 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 I look at the term gamer and people who self-identify themselves as gamers. I probably have done that in the past. And I think we have something of a small problem in that. A, gamer is not a protected class. It doesn't sort of work that way. And there seems to be a sensibility that we're sequestered in society and that there's this larger monolithic society that's kind of telling us what to do. It doesn't work that way. We really aren't gamers. We are consumers of commercial media. Uh, and, and, and that's all we really are. We just happen to like one maybe a little bit more than another one out there. And I think a lot of the histrionics that have come out of this really don't serve us terribly well if you really kind of look at a large swath of it and how this discussion and this discourse is going forth. But what Gamer also seems to be indicating to me is because people who do consume video games do sort of exist in a self-segregated community, it has impacted the ability to kind of demonstrate and show what the medium is like to a larger world. There are some innate problems that come from video games that uh, if you just kind of take a, a one minute selection from Call of Duty or Final Fantasy, uh, it doesn't really say much about the game, about what the experience is of playing it. Now contrast that to taking uh, a minute's worth of say Django Unchained, a very violent movie, uh, you can immediately start to see the artistry. You can see that sensibility that there's something there that is more than just, I don't know, indulgence in violent activities. And I think right in there is the problem. It really is one of language. If you go through all of history, so many problems seem to erupt from language. Go ask someone who speaks Flemish what it's like over there in Belgium. Uh, it's just, it changes over time. And you know, for, for a more contemporary example, I can go back to the 90s when uh, this whole story came up about wanting to spell women, W-O-M-Y-N. And uh, there was, I think, even a group that wanted to uh, turn manholes into woman holes or people holes. Um, this became this huge debate. It was just used as this way to sort of castigate the feminist movement. Um, and I really felt that the anxiety was because it was going to affect language. It's this way that we know how to interact with each other. It's how we interpret and understand the world. And for those that don't play video games, when they look at video games or they hear or interact with people who are very involved in video games, it is like hearing another language that you don't understand. It's like someone speaking in code around you. It's, there's an anxiety that comes from not understanding things in the world around you. And there is a large, the majority of the population of this country are not playing video games and they see this unknown out there and it causes them a lot of anxiety. So, is there anything we really can do to address something like that? Well, we could wait around for the people that really seem to dislike video games to just kind of fade away, die, something like that. But that still may take a while. People are living to ripe old ages these days. 
Another idea, and uh, actually this came from my, uh, my friend and colleague, Stephen Totillo, who's over at Kotaku. We both uh, contributed to something on IGN from Casey Lynch. It was various people in the uh, media commenting on what they thought about this debate. And I think he kind of hit the nail on the head that uh, we in the press seem to be the ones that are out there trying to defend games and their legitimacy, whereas the industry itself, the people who make the games, the people who sell the games, seem to be a lot more reticent to ever get themselves in front of the camera and explain their product. Explanation, not alienation, will probably be the best road to allow those who don't know anything about games, probably have no intention to ever play games, to not look at games as some kind of strange and corrupting other. Now, my final thought here is, and I've always ruminated on this, why so many games tend to be violent. And, you know, I, I enjoy playing them. I was talking about this in the earlier Cecil or something. And I've always thought that it's not so much that you would want to play a game to shoot other things, but you play the game because you're so important, everyone wants to shoot you. It is that strange moment, maybe during the day, when you get home from work in the evening, where you truly are important. And if you kind of look at how a lot of people feel in society today, and trust me, I once worked for a large media company, you tend to feel a little bit small. And it's interesting that you would want to have that respite, albeit a stressful, potentially violent respite, where you are the focus of attention. Okay, here's the part where I answer questions. Today I'm not gonna answer a specific question because so many of you asked the same question underneath uh, my last Sessler something, how to score, about how I've shifted the review scale here to a one out of five uh, numeric scale, despite the fact that I have in the past always talked about how much I dislike doing that. Um, a lot of you wanted to know why I hadn't just gone with having no score whatsoever at the end. And I wanna let you know that is something I considered and experimented with. I found over time that when you're doing video, this is specific to video, it doesn't seem to work. I believe because video and those types of reviews traffic in such specifics, we're talking about something and you're seeing it at the same time, to not have something that resolves itself at the end uh, really kind of leaves it unfinished. And it, it, it really doesn't work. I just wanted to assure you guys that is something I considered, it is something that I kind of dabbled in, and ultimately I came to the decision that doing it the traditional way worked a lot better. So, once again, feel free to ask more questions. I will answer them next week. It does not have to be about uh, the topic of this Cessler or something. It could be about other things in video games. Just not when Kingdom Hearts 3 is coming out.